Hey everybody. Uh, hadn't done a video in a while. But uh, recently made a knife and thought I'd do a little short video on it. Uh, years ago before my accident and before becoming disabled I used to make knives. Uh, and oddly enough, before I quit, uh, I didn't even bother to keep one for myself. And back then I was making more or less hunting knives, skinning knives, and wasn't even into bushcraft at that time. But uh, I wanted to make at least one knife uh, to keep for myself. And uh, <clears throat> because of my narcolepsy and uh, having difficulty staying awake, uh, I did the majority of this one by hand. Uh, with a file jig that I made, and uh, show if you'd care to see the uh, the building of the knife, you can go to Bushcraft USA, and I've got a thread on there showing from start to finish the whole build process on it. But uh, just wanted to uh, shoot a short video on it to show that it it is. Uh, a use a knife made to use. It's, it's not for looks, it's for use. Uh, it's made out of 1095 high carbon steel. The scales on it, uh, one of my friends on the uh, BC USA forum sent me the wood for them. And they're made out of Patagonian rosewood. Really, really beautiful wood. Real hard too. And it has uh, some black fiber spacers in it. I'll get a close-up here of it here in a minute, but uh, just wanted to shoot this short video, like I say, kind of for the guys on the forum especially to, to show that uh, my intentions of, of making the knife was to use it and, and use it in the woods, use it hard for whatever it needs to be used for, not just, to, not just a knife to be looked at, and that, that's what any of them should be for. But uh, there's the sheath that I made. I'll zoom in here in just a minute and get some close-ups on this. And uh, I know some people don't don't think you should baton a knife. Uh, with the knives I used to make, I put them through all kinds of torture tests, unbelievable torture tests. And uh, you know, I, I carry a. Uh, small axe with me in the woods. Sorry about the road noise. I'm here behind my house. I'm not out in the woods. So apologize for the road noise. The highway is just about a quarter of a mile over yonder. But uh, I have no concerns whatsoever about batoning this knife uh, through any piece of wood. It, it's not going to hurt it a bit. Uh, <clears throat> Again, it's made out of 1095. It's differentially heat treated. Uh, <clears throat> it'll throw a spark off the spine. Uh, you can use it on a ferro rod. It's hard enough the spine to to use on a ferro rod, and it'll also uh, throw sparks with flint. Uh, you had had to heat it pretty good to make it throw sparks from flint. And uh, since it's differentially heat treated. The, back, the spine of the knife is softer than the edge, so <clears throat> hitting it with the flint does kind of booger the spine up. Uh, so I won't be doing that. It's, I tested it to know if it would do it in an emergency. Uh, I, I don't believe in abusing a knife, but I believe in using it uh, for whatever uh, it's needed to be used for. So let me zoom in here a little bit closer. And uh, those of you that are anti-batoners, I'll probably get some hate comments on this, but uh, I want to demonstrate uh, that it's not going to hurt the knife a bit to baton it, and that it'll hold up to it. Let me zoom in and get a little closer. Huh? Already been doing some batoning with it. I got a knotty piece of cherry here that I've already batoned through, split it in half. <clears throat> but let me show you 
the knife close up. Trying to see the viewfinder there, make sure it's in frame. There's the knife close up. It's a uh, saber grind, 3 sixteenths inch thick. Hopefully in the video you can see the, the black uh, liners there. The Patagonian rosewood scales. If I get a little closer on those, show how pretty that wood is. Uh, brass pins and thong tube. I haven't put a lanyard on it yet. Not sure whether I will for sure or not. That saber grind. This side of the scale, I, I couldn't, uh, the wood that I had wasn't uh, wide enough to get book matched uh, scales for it. So this side is, is considerably lighter and doesn't have as nice a grain, but it's still real pretty wood. And here's the sheath, back side of the sheath. Left the belt loop low because I'll probably put a dangler on it. Uh, left a loop, ferro rod loop on the sheath. There's the sheath. Now let's have some fun. Hopefully you can see the knots in there, so that's definitely not good straight grain wood. scales on that knot. I don't like to hit one back on the handle area if I don't have to. Stand up there again, maybe. Me batoning <clears throat> is a much safer way to work your tender or kindling up into much smaller pieces than swinging an axe uh, or a hatchet. But that's that's personal preference. If you'd, uh, you'd rather use your hatchet than more power to you. Not exactly a prime piece to do. Other sticks with it. But... For shavings. As you can see, it cuts cuts really well. I don't know if I can show this on the camera or not. I'm not a real hairy person. <laughs> I don't know if it'll show up or not, but let me. 
and this is no hard abuse test for sure but just to show you and hopefully hopefully some hair will show up there but see didn't hurt it a bit still sharp as a razor point on this one is just right in front of the Ricasso. Uh, I like my knives even though it's not a real big knife it's a I forgot to mention this it's a uh, six inch blade. Let me zoom back out real quick. Okay. It's a six inch blade uh, from Ricasso to the tip, six inch saber grind, three sixteenths thick, and uh, my inspiration for the style of the knife uh, was the Kephart, and uh, <clears throat> this one is what I would call a modified Kephart. I guess you could say it's, it's kind of my version of a Kephart. I wanted a, a taller blade than a Kephart. A Kephart is one inch tall, and this one is an inch and a half tall. I think a Kephart is a four inch blade. This one's a six inch blade. But the blade profile uh, itself uh, was inspired by the Kephart. Uh, design knife and I didn't do anything fancy on the handle uh, again that's to uh, to show tribute I guess to the uh, the Kephart style just keeping it plain and simple just a plain and simple woods knife that'll do what you need to get done think if I've missed anything but anyway uh, I needed to do another video anyway and, and had this knife uh, just finished up that I wanted to share with everybody so thanks for watching everybody and uh, I'll have some some new video coming up soon I'm hosting uh, a new uh, winter 2017 BC USA meet next month and uh, got uh, I believe people from either 13 or 14 different states coming in for the meet that I'm hosting so uh, I'm gonna spend a week in the woods and I'll be shooting some video out there and uh, just expecting to have a great time I think uh, it's probably somewhere around 30 people that will be in attendance for the meet so I'll be for sure shooting some video out there and taking photos and I'll try to get that together after the meet and uh, and post up but uh, if you haven't already checked out uh, the forum Bushcraft USA uh, I'd highly encourage you to do so I've been a member for a little over two years, I think now, and knew absolutely nothing about bushcraft whenever I joined the forum. And it's been a tremendous blessing. I still don't know much, <laughs> but I've learned a lot in the couple of years that I've been there. A great group of people, and uh, just amazingly generous with their time and information to help new bushcrafters like myself learn and, and pass along the skills and knowledge uh, you know that that we need to bring back to this day and age you know pass along to our kids our friends and those those primitive skills a lot of people have forgotten them forgotten how important they are but uh, check out the forum thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.
edit to add. <laughs> uh, I should have should have mentioned this and I didn't. But uh, before anybody asks, no, I do not make knives to sell. I'm simply not able to do it anymore. Uh, you're welcome to, if you like this pattern, this style, you're more than welcome to use it. Uh, but I, I do not make knives for other people. Uh, haven't made a knife in, I think, about six years. And it's taken me that long <coughs> to, uh, I guess with my health conditions, to get up the courage to, uh, to make this one. But finding the file jig that, uh, I believe his name is Go, Gaw, if I'm pronouncing that right, my apologies, sir, if I'm not pronouncing your name right. But Gaw Knives uh, has a video showing a file jig that he uses, or used to use. And that's what I used to make this knife so that I wouldn't have to grind it uh, on the 2x72 belt grinder. Uh, with the narcolepsy issues, it, it made it safer for me to do it that way. It took me about six weeks to make this knife. So, uh, <laughs> again, that's another reason I don't make them for anybody else. You know, there, there's no way, as long as it takes me to do one, uh, there's no way I can make them to, to sell them. But again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.